Hi, my name is Jennifer Moore. I'm a guidance counselor at Crescent Heights High School. Thanks so much for joining me today. Um, I'm just here to give you some basic high school information today, talk about course selection, AP, what is that, what our registration process is looking like this year, uh, transferring, transportation, and hopefully answer all your questions through this uh, PowerPoint YouTube presentation today. So at Crescent Heights High School, we run on a semester system, so that means that there are two semesters each year, so from September to January, and then students switch and take four new fresh courses from January to June. Um, most of our courses are worth five credits, so your core courses are that way, but you will notice that you have CTS credits um, if you're in options that are like mechanics or foods, and what that means is they are five credits in the end, but you're awarded one credit for every single unit that you do. So again, nothing to worry about today, just something I wanted to let you know about. Um, students typically complete high school in three years, so in grade 10, we max you out. We're like 40 credits, let's do full course load each semester, get you nice and settled in Crescent Heights so that we can look at maybe taking a spare in grade 11, and then even two spares in grade 12, and then we still give you a cushion of credits. Again, I'm just talking about this today really briefly. You're gonna work with your guidance counselor all throughout high school on this stuff. Um, there's something different about high school too. There's course prereqs. So what does that mean? Well, it just means you need to pass your courses, friends. So you do need to get a, a, a mark of 50% or higher in your core course to move on to the next level. But a lot of times they're like, hey, more than 50 is probably a good thing. I wouldn't want a doctor who just like squeezed through with like a 50%. So we do recommend 60 to 65 to move on to the next course. But again, general high school information right now. Uh, we'll talk lots more about that in the next three years. What courses will I take? So what do you take in a typical grade 10 year? So you're going to come in to us and you're going to take English and social studies, math, science. Everybody takes phys ed 10. That's required for your high school diploma. And then you can break up with it if it's a class you're not really into or keep going as an option right up to the grade 12 level. And then three option courses. So it is a pretty nice first year at Crescent Heights. Your academic course levels are based on your grade nine's teacher's recommendation and, and how you're doing in grade nine. So as much as I'm super excited about getting to know you, I don't know you yet. So we do really trust with what your grade nine's teachers are recommending. So please honor that. Like there's, you'll see in a minute, there's so much zigzag in high school um, that yeah, when they recommend something, I really hope that, that you embrace that. There are opportunities to upgrade and change pathways in high school to support your, super, your future goals. So we'll give you a handout that's included um, that you can take a look at that. And you'll have some choice when selecting options in, in grade 10. So we'll talk about that today too. I just wanna briefly talk about a high school diploma because that's what we're all kind of working towards or starting to work towards maybe um, in the next little bit. So 100 credits or more, so that's why we give you full 40 course credits in grade 10. Um, English and social you take to grade 12. Math and science you can end at the end of grade 11. Phys Ed 10, there is a health course that you'll need to graduate and then 10 credits and options. So look at that, next year you're gonna get that done right away along with your Phys Ed. And then you take 10 credits at the grade 12 level besides English and social. So for some people that's math and science, but for other people that might be like French and sports pro, we do meet with students every single year to plan this out. I just wanted you to feel like the end is kind of getting near. Like you guys have been going since kindergarten, you're at the end of grade nine, you're getting close friends. So that's why I put this slide in here. So in the next couple slides, I'm just gonna show you the pathways. Cause I really, it's cool to see in high school that High school is kind of like Lego. There's lots of pathways all over the place. So your teacher might recommend you for English 10-1 or 10-2, but look at friends, if you're in 10-2 and you get all the way to grade 12, 30-2, you can pop up to 30-1 if all of a sudden you discover that you need that. Or vice versa, you can be in social studies and get towards grade 12 and be like, actually, I don't need a dash one. I just need a dash two for this program. I can take that too. So it's very personalized. So that's why I want to start to show you this now. Um, in grade nine going into grade 10, just to show you how much freedom there is in high school. Math and science are a little bit different. So in math, you'll see a course called Math 10C. So the C stands for combined because the dash one and dash two are together. Um, you'll see after you go through the C, you can decide with your teacher whether it's a better fit to go dash one or dash two. This is where you really work with your guidance counselor friends. Like dash one does not mean all. Um, nursing, for example, prefers a course like 30 dash two. So I want you to like really work with your counselor in the next couple of years to figure out what's the best fit. And then 10-3, those are awesome, smart courses. So there's tons of trade courses that prefer Dash 3. It's the math that you would be doing off at SAIT. So again, 
really trust your teacher, listen to your teacher. I know there's not as many arrows between um, the courses for math, and then you'll see that with science, um, but there is a way to work with your counselor to get exactly what you want when you're finishing off high school and working towards your goals. So science is very similar to the math, so there's kind of like this gateway course called Science 10 if you're interested in su studying subjects like chemistry, physics, or biology. So after you go through Science 10, which is one unit of each of those things, you can choose to just take one science in grade 11, which we saw earlier is all you need for a high school diploma. Or you can take more than one if that's like of your interest or what you're thinking after high school. Or you could just take good old Science 14 and 24 and be done with science. But the cool thing is, is that if you take an individual science in grade 11, like a chem, bio, or physics, you'll see that arrow goes, all goes to science 30. So if by grade 12 you're like, actually, I think I just want a general science experience, that's there too. So again, lots of piece work when it comes to high school, only showing you the stuff so that you can see kind of what it looks like, but that's the job of you and your guidance counselor. So uh, just taking a peek, but don't stress over your fear, like what did this all mean? Don't worry, just, just an introduction today. So what I do want you to think about um, in the next couple weeks in conjunction with your teachers at your feeder school is to think about what do you want to take when you come to Crescent Heights. So we do have two programs. So the first is a semester program. So just like we talked about at the beginning, you have two semesters, four classes each semester. Um, if you're interested in pre-AP, you can take that for English, social studies, or math. And we'll talk about pre-AP in a little bit. Everybody takes phys ed because you need that for your diploma and you take three option courses. You can request 120 level course, so a grade 11 course in your second semester, but it's only recommended if you're looking at multiple sciences, and we'll talk about how you can check that out. But honestly, I think you just rock another option. If you decide you wanna take a, a 20 level course in your second semester, that's a good reason to see your counselor um, in the fall and change that, because it'll be easier to get into a 20 level core course, probably, than it will be to get into an option. So what could your semester look like? There's a sample schedule on the screen, so two cores, an option in phys ed, and the other semester you'll have two options and two core courses. So I said everything is semestered and you take four courses each semester, but the exception are 10T courses. So 10T courses are unique to Crescent Heights. They're an amazing thing, friends. Um, what they are is if you think you struggle in a subject or your teacher thinks you need a little bit more time, they're the amazing gift. So we offer them um, for Math 10C, we have it for Science 10T this year, and then we're looking to offer a Humanities 10T. So what does that mean? It means you get the entire year to work on math. So um, that's not a bad thing. You lose an option, but then you get Calm, that health course we need for your high school dip diploma done early, and then you get a learning strategies. If you struggle in Humanities and writing, you can take English and Social 10 together as a Humanities kind of approach. You don't lose any options, but you have it all year, so maybe some stuff is cross-curricular and you can go a little bit slower and work on your skills. And then this year we offered Science 10T. So Science 10T runs all afternoon. It's really fun. You work on stretching out that science, having more time to work on the skills of Science 10. You get your phys ed that you need for your high school diploma. And then they're also doing environmental outdoor ed. Um, and they get, yeah, the same amount of credits as everybody else. And really, it depends, the amount of options that you have coming out of this really depends on how many 10T courses you take. So we're saying a maximum of two, and on the next slide I'll show you some potential schedules. But, and a great, great gift. Some students in the past were repeating Math 10C two, three times trying to get to the university dreams, and we're like, this is silly, let's find a way to support you guys here where you can slow down, build confidence and skills. It's a great course. So the other option we have at Crescent Heights is the science focus. So this is what I want you to think about for registration friends. So are you gonna do semester that we just talked about where you take your core courses, maybe some of them are 10T and you're rocking your phys ed and your options, or are you gonna look at the science focus? So the science focus is just finishing up its third year. It's been amazing. It's totally been growing every single year. Um, if you're interested in a career maybe in science, tech, engineering, math, we're adding robotics, um, it's a really, really cool program. So you make cross-curricular connections and you explore career options. We have great field experiences, great field trips, 
Um, and we have a brand new course coming to it next year, so we're really pumped about that too. It's the Technology, Innovation, Engineering, and Robotics course. So in the past, if you knew people who came through Science Focus, they took a course called Design Thinking. Well, we decided we have a robotics teacher on staff. We've never really gone that direction in the Science Focus, so that's where we're heading, friends. So you do take four classes per semester, so you're still semesters. You go from like January, uh, to, sorry, September to the end of January and then February to the end of June, but you take pre-AP level for math and science. So that's the only way you can do a pre-AP level for science in grade 10. Um, everyone still takes phys ed, and then you take this new course, this Tech Innovation Engineering Robotics course. You get a special Chem 20 pre-AP course semester two just for you guys, and you also take one option course, which we'll talk about later. So there's a sample schedule here, so maybe you have your math and your science pre-AP and this new tech course and an option or phys ed 10. Second semester, you might have your English and social and that special Chem 20 pre-AP just for you guys or your option course if you decide that's not a good fit or sometimes you meet with your counselor and really personalize it from there. And then you'd have your phys ed or your or your complimentary course in second semester if you haven't taken one or the other. Um, what's the deal with this? Well, after the first year, I definitely went in and I snuck in and I talked to the science-focused students. I closed the door, I said, okay, it's just a guidance counselor here. Tell me for real what I should be telling grade nine students. And they said to tell you, don't freak out about the pace of science focus. I think sometimes people think like, oh my gosh, it's all this pre-AP, can I handle it? And they're like, tell them not to worry about it. It's actually fine, it's great. They love that they can ask anyone in their class for help, like because you're all working on the same thing. So a lot of the groups in the Science Focus have started their own group texts, um, their own group chats. They help each other with their homework. And they said the transition to high school was really nice because, yeah, Preston is a big school. Like we're close to 1,800 students. So to come into a program that has 80 students in it, you do really get to know each other really well. And you're all interested in the same thing. Um, and working towards really similar goals and it's been a great way for people to make friends. And they love, love, love the field trips. I know that didn't really happen this year. We're still trying to do really cool experiences with them. But uh, yeah, they did some really neat things that I was like, that's pretty cool. So I've talked a lot about AP and pre-AP, but we haven't really dove into like what is advanced placement. So in Calgary High Schools, you'll see that you have the option of looking at advanced placement or IB. So I'm not going to talk a lot about IB today because, well, we, we don't offer IB, but we have advanced placement. So the difference is, is the advanced placement comes out of the United States. So it comes from the College Board in the U.S. Um, it was designed basically because professors saw a gap between high school and university that they really wanted high schools to fill. Uh, it's really cool courses if you're interested in going on to post-secondary. If you're really passionate about subjects, it gives you an opportunity to dive deeper in and then you'll take a look at university material in high school, which is really, really cool. And there's like also a no stress thing with it. So you can choose in grade 12 or grade 11 whenever you get to the grade 12 level of the course to write the AP exam. That happens in May of that year. but your diploma courses, all the things that you're applying for post-secondary, you're assessed just like everybody else, as if you weren't even an AP. But then if you rock that AP exam, you can use that grade to like pass, like not take the first year university course if your university accepts that, or a lot of students will retake that course in university and just kill it. They have the foundation from high school, uh, they know the material already because they saw it in high school and just get a really great GPA in university. The nice thing about AP is it's just like the other things we talked about today. You can choose. So you can be like, I think I want to do AP in this course. Um, and maybe not that course. It's not an all or nothing thing with your core. We'll take more of a look at that in our next slide. So with AP, like I said, you can pop in and out. So you might start with a pre-AP course in grade 10 and then you love it and you keep going but by grade 12 you're like no just kidding I don't want to take AP or vice versa you can be like no I don't think I want to try that in grade 10 and then you actually you end up actually loving the subject you're like I definitely want to take this as an AP in grade 11 you can and you could keep going with it to grade 12 or change your mind too so I just want you to know that there's tons of flexibility with AP um, take some time think about it if your teachers recommend it for you, that's cool. You can decide to register for that, or you can be like, no, maybe I'll wait and see after grade 10 if it's a good fit for me. Okay, it's option time. This is the fun time. This is where you get to go shop for um, some classes that you might not want to take for fun. So let's talk about them. The option guide is on our website, so I do want you to check that out where you can dive deeper to see more what you do in these classes. 
And then I want you to think really carefully about this too, because sometimes people will pick options based off of, hey, my friend wants to take this, we can take it together. But sorry, friends, we have like mechanics running every period of the day. So the chances of you ending up with your friend, if that's your plan, probably won't happen. So really, yeah, take a look at what options we have to offer and think about what you want to take. So mechanics, computer science, design studies, fashion, foods, forensic science. So that's like crime solving, looking behind the scenes, um, cabinet making or furniture construction, leadership 10, legal studies, metal tech, photo video arts, and then that new technology innovation engineering robotics 10 course for the science focus will be offered as an option on its own. It will just look a little different as a general option. So these are CTS courses. So these are the ones that I said, you'll see you get one credit for every unit and then we give you five credits by the end or we try to give you five credits by the end. That's up to you to earn the credits, friends. Um, so yeah, hands-on courses, lots of fun, small class sizes. So it's a great way to make some new friends and try some new things. And that's the CTS area. In the area of fine arts options, we have Art 10 where you're gonna do a unit of drawing, painting, and sculpting. Or you can also look at taking Art 10 next year and then in second semester take Advanced Art where you can just specialize in one area of art. So you can be like, I really love drawing, so I just want to do that. So you just have to pick both of them when you sign up for your options. Um, dance 15, you don't have to have a dance background to rock some dance, so think about that if you've always wanted to try it. Drama 10, that's acting, we know how to explain that course. Instrumental music, so it is a full year course, so it counts as two options because you can't have the band show up at Remembrance Day and not be there for grad friends. We do need you to take band for the whole year. So there's that option. And tech theater, so tech theater is the behind the scenes of drama. So you're looking at set design, lighting, costumes, and sound, um, and stage makeup. So sometimes you'll see students walking around with like gore makeup on, all those good things. We're really lucky at Crescent Heights to be able to offer a lot of different options when it comes to languages, which is really cool. So we have Chinese or Mandarin, French, German, and Spanish. So when you see the three Y, that means it's meant for students who've never taken that language before. So it's a brand new three year program that you can start in grade 10 and go right to the grade 12 or 30 level. And the nine Y means that you've taken that before. So we know a lot of students in schools have French. So if you have a background in French at all, then please sign up for the 9Y. Aboriginal Studies is not a language course, it's a personal develop, uh, culture course, so it's really cool. So you learn history, traditions, um, stories, lots of great things in that course. Ab Studies, if you go to the 30 level, can be used as an academic course to apply for university too, so great thing. So phys ed and wellness, that's another area in the school, so everybody takes phys ed 10, but if you love phys ed, you can definitely take some different courses too. So sports medicine, like being a trainer for the team, sports performance, working on your endurance and fitness, environmental and outdoor education 10, and yoga 15. Showed you all the arrows and all that good stuff early on. I just wanted to mention this in case your junior high has it. I know some junior highs have access to my blueprint. If you do have access to myblueprint.ca slash CBE, there is a great high school planner on there where you can just go on there and play and you can search out post-secondary requirements. I do not want you to figure out your life at all. It's just fun to go shopping and see maybe in grade 11 I might need two sciences or maybe I need this dash in math. We're gonna talk about this tons throughout high school. It's just, you know what, grade nine, ten, sometimes it can be stressful going to university uh, or even thinking about university. So going into high school, it might be nice to go and check this out. But if you do not have this, please don't worry about it. Number four, I want you to relax. People change majors, change their minds all the time. So we just want you to look for the ish. We'll do that together starting in grade 10. Just mentioning, if you have it, take a look. If you don't, all good. What do your days look like at Crescent Heights? Well, this is an older timetable, but that's because it's barely changed in the last couple of years. So you start school around 8.50, the warning bell rings, and then you have a half an hour lunch, and you're done at around 3.35. The nice thing I just wanted to show you there is on Fridays, you guys are done nice and early at 12.21. You'll notice that on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, the class order goes one, two, three, four, and then it flips to one, four, three. So sometimes that's a little bit confusing when you first come and you're like, oh crap, I went to the wrong class. What day is this? But I promise, we expect that when you're first figuring out this place. Um, but yeah, this is what your days could look like in the fall. So how do you register? So this year it might look different. Um, 
it's COVID friends. So we have sent paper copies to all the feeder schools. So this is like little snippets of what the paper form looks like. But if we had to do something as a fillable form or something online, this will have the same information. So again, core courses are chosen based on your grade nine teachers recommendations for your language arts, your social, your math, and your science. So please connect with them and they will fill that section of the registration form. We will only take registrations that come from your feeder school. So please make sure you're turning in these forms or, or fillable PDFs to your junior high teachers. And then if you're freaking out because you were recommended for one course, but you work really hard between now and the end of grade nine, maybe those recommendations will change. And don't worry, we get emails from, from teachers at your junior high schools all the way up to the end of June. So we can change this. This is not fixed. So you'll see the reg form. You'll choose science focus or semestered, you let your teacher know and they'll do the recommendations on the right part when it comes to core courses. So for options, the part B of the form, we want you to rank your option choices in order from one to eight. One being like, please, please, please get me in that class to like eight. I still am friends with my counselor if that's what I end up with. We have so many options, so please, please don't stress. So choose carefully. It's, it's super hard to change courses. Like once your schedule is set, classes are really full. We build them based off of the number of requests that we get. So it's really hard to change things around. Please read the option guide. I know I mentioned it before on the reg form. It will tell you where to find it because I don't want you picking something, thinking it's something totally different. In the past, we had students sign up for design studies thinking it was like fashion design studies and they were gonna fashion all these clothing and do all these cool designs. And it's really like, no friends, this is like a blueprinting kind of like architecture kind of course. And, and courses are changing all the time. So please take the time to read the option guide to see what your teachers at Crescent Heights are saying that you're gonna be doing. So I want you to enjoy the classes that you have. Um, and then we ask for your contact info in there in case your counselor has a question for you. And at the bottom, you'll see that you can choose a 20 level academic um, math or science course. But again, I don't know, think about it, right? We have lots of time to fit all these courses in. The registration timeline, so this is what's going to be happening over the next couple months. So between now and early March, we would love for you to choose your options, work with your grade nine teachers over picking your core courses, and then we will either get those forms from you or sometimes we come out and register you one-on-one. -on -one. So we'll just figure that out together this year with your junior high schools. Um, in April, you can check your PowerSchool account on a desktop computer and look under class registration to make sure that we entered all your classes correctly. We'll send an email out in April for you to do that. In June, you have the opportunity to change academic levels, so your teachers will email us if they think another course is a better fit. And then in July and August, we send you home a newsletter from the school, let you know how to get to school. Your initial schedules will be available on PowerSchool, but please don't fall in love with them because we balance and move things around right up to the first day of classes. You can request to change your options through an online forum, but like I said, friends, it's really hard to change your options, so take the time now to research what you'd like. And then September 1st, first day of classes, very limited availability to change classes, but guess what, friends, it's only grade 10s on the first day, so it's a really nice day to start here at Crescent Heights. Just you guys, you get to know each other, get to know the school. We're super excited to see you. So before we end this presentation, I do want to mention some clubs and sports because high school is way more than just the classes that you take. We know that tons of memories and great times come out of this. So yeah, let's chat about it. So clubs do vary year to year based off of the students that we have and the teachers that sponsor so and the interests that students have. So the past couple of years, we've had Art Society, Auto Club, Anime, bike so that's raising money for the Children's Hospital, um, riding spin bikes, Honorary Brave Dogs Clan, Choir. Culture Club, Dance, Diversity Council, Debate, Drama, Fitness Center, so just go get your fitness on. You don't need to be in a club for that. You can just show up. Uh, our GSA and our Grad Committee. Again, a lot of these courses, if you're like, oh man, I requested like art or auto or, and I didn't get into it, you can do it as a club or a society outside of school. And look, we have even more clubs, so Health Professionals Club, so if you're interested in a career in healthcare, we get you connected with university students, Homework Haven if you need a quiet place to work on homework, Junior Achievement, so starting your own business, even selling your own products, Music Creation Club, Muslim Youth Club, Radio Clubs, we do have like a radio system that plays in the school, Rap Battle Club, come get your rap battle on, Sports Medicine Trainer, Student Council, Student Wellness Advocacy, uh, I can't talk, Advocacy Team, World Culture Society, Yearbook Club, Youth Volunteer Corps, and Video Game Club. So many things to choose from, friends. You can definitely find a place to check out.
We have a ton of different sports for you to get involved as an athlete at Crescent Heights High School too. So again, if you have a background in it or not at all, please come check out our sports and try to get involved. So we have football. Um, we usually send home information about football in our summer newsletter because football actually starts up before school gets going. Uh, volleyball starts right away. Cross country, if you can run, rock some cross country. It's a no-cut sport. Swimming is also a no-cut sp cut sport. If you can swim, you can be on the swim team. That, they practice two mornings a week. In the fall, basketball, badminton, wrestling, soccer. Soccer is a spring and a fall sport depending on what team you're on. Track and field is huge. We have hundreds of students that participate in track and field. Rugby and field hockey. So much to check out for the athletics as well too, friends. I do want you to walk it, watch out for more information on our math summer camp. So if you don't know about this, it's offered the last two weeks of August just for part of the day, usually in the mornings. And it's a review of grade 6, 7, 8 math skills to prep you for Math 10C. It's a great chance for you to get to know our school early. Uh, we just have a small group of students in for math just in grade 10. You find your locker, you meet some friends, you get to connect with teachers. All the math teachers rotate through and teach that course. Admin is in and all your guidance counselors are in so you can get to meet them too. So again, if you're like a little freaked out about high school, it's a nice transition. And if you're a little worried about your math, by the end of math camp, they'll recommend what, what class they think is a good fit too. The last section I want to talk about before we wrap up is how do I transfer to CHHS? Well, there is a brand new transfer process coming out, so I honestly don't have a lot of information to tell you at this point. It will be sent to parents and guardians mid-January by email, so watch for that. Your grade 9 teachers will be able to answer any questions about the transfer process after they receive that information. We do know that transfer paperwork has to go to the main office of the school you would like to go to or transfer to no later than noon on Monday, March 15th. So I do know that date is staying strong. Otherwise, we're going to learn this together. So please watch for that information to come out. Thanks so much for joining me today. It was great to virtually meet you. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to when we get to meet each other in person. If you have any questions, definitely check us out on Instagram. You can keep up with lots of information that's happening in the school. So we have a general one at Crescent Cowboys a CHHS athletics and a science focus that you can follow. There are updated AP and option guides on our website under teaching and learning, program focus and approach, complementary courses, or you can just use the search bar. If you have any questions, since this is a YouTube presentation, please reach out to your grade nine teachers. If they don't know the answer, they'll reach out and connect with us here at Crescent Heights. Thanks for hanging in here. I know it was a long presentation. I hope you got lots of great information. And I just want you to relax. Like, I know it's a little scary going to high school, but I promise we hang out together. We get you nice and settled. It's a great school, really nice people. You're going to make some great friends and great memories, and we can't wait to see you in the fall.